Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Kogi, Manufacturing Evangelist here for Autodesk, and I'm here with Nate, the intern. He got stuck with me this summer. So anyway, it's been a while since I did a two-minute tip, and uh, I was working with Nate the other day on, on some iLogic form editing stuff, and how you can use the form editor to kind of figure out some of your quick layouts when it comes to, well, in this example, we're going to do robot design, right? Yep. So show us a little bit about what uh, what you need, the problem you need to solve. All right, so last year in the breakaway competition, we had to get over a foot tall bump with our robots. So obviously teams were really concerned about their ground clearance and how they were going to deal with that. So a lot of teams had a lot of trial and error, a lot of wooden mock-ups. Today mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to use the form tool to uh, solve that problem. Sweet, so you're just going to be able to drive some parameters and change some, some, uh, uh, some, some values here to change the size of the wheel the height, the length, and determine your optimum envelope that you can work in, right? Exactly. Make a make kind of the ideal robot bat base, if you will. All right. Let's see how it works. All right. So um, we're going to jump right in, and I'm going to go and click in my iLogic editor and click Add a Form. Okay. And let's go down, drag and drop all the parameters I've set into my form. You can see my form's already starting to come work itself out right there. Nice. For the first one, I'll add a slider, and uh, I'm good, and I'm going to take that and say, all right, you know, I don't really want it to drive only 10 inches. I want it to be 12, and I need to make sure that I'm accurate, so I'm going to give myself a little bit more precision and make it go in steps of quarter inches. Okay. Um, we'll go back up to wheel diameter, and we can, for this one, I'm cool with the defaults. You know, we're never going to have anything bigger than 10-inch wheels. For ground clearance, slider, again, I'm good with the 10 inches, but let's give ourselves a little bit more precision with that. We don't want us to be stuck with just inches, you know? Yeah. And uh, lastly, for the distance between centers, we're, uh, we're going to put another slider in here just because it's nicer to do things in real time. And uh, But again, let's make sure that, you know, we need I want a 36 inch wheelbase uh, as my maximum. And for step sizes, let let's, let's again do those quarter inches. All right, cool. So now you've got the form built. It goes in there. So now all you have to do is, is just click on the form to launch it and move the sliders around, right? Yep. So we can go to form. And now I've got this sweet form. And I can just sit here. And I can increase the size of my wheels. I can adjust my ground clearance. And then the cool thing is, is that because I added that drive functionality, I, I can test it going over the full length of the bump. So I can say, okay, right there is probably where I'm going to have the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. And I, if I want to keep a low center of gravity, I can even shrink my wheel size down a little bit. And I can look at, okay, I could even pull off a very wide based robot and still maintain my ground clearance. But if I go, let's say if my distance between centers gets too big, I'm going to start having problems. So then I know I need to make a readjustment and I can start bumping that ground clearance back up. Right, or change the wheel size, or so basically you're able to run through just a ton of uh, of design alternatives within a matter of minutes, rather rather than doing a bunch of physical prototypes, right? Yeah, exactly. This this could save me, you know, a hundred dollars with a plywood and a uh, a good day's work. So see, that's the budget that you get with the first robotics, about a hundred dollars worth worth of plywood. Now go ahead and uh, and and take this uh, this tip here. I think it's great for two D layouts. Um, to be able to run through a number of different design alternatives uh, in, a, in a very, very very short period of time uh, by just using the new form editor tool inside of Autodesk Inventor 2012 and, uh, and, and just changing it to a slider and getting that real-time feedback. Yeah, that's right. And even works with sketch blocks. So. All right. And don't forget to follow Nate the Intern uh, on Twitter, at Nate the Intern. He's going to be documenting his, uh, his summer with Rob, if you will. Yeah. We'll see you next time.